American Fork football right here on KSL Sports Rewind brought to you by Avenue Bakery. I'm Mark Winterton along with Nate Carter joining me in today's matchup in this quarterfinal matchup as Farmington. The Farmington Phoenix coming to take on the American, American Fork Cavemen. What do you got here, Nate? Yeah, it should be an exciting one. Afternoon Utah playoff football. Two teams that aren't afraid to pass the ball tonight as we see a tough caveman team versus a young and hungry Farmington Phoenix. Well, this Farmington team, very potent on offense. What are they like on defense? Yeah, defense, they've been doing their job, I guess, <laughs> keeping keeping the opposing team from scoring less than them as they come into this 9-2 and two on the season. Here's Farnsworth's kick. As going to go into the end zone, as always, as usual, I should say, as that'll be a touchback. It's going to be first and 10 for Farmington at their own 20-yard line. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, as we see the junior quarterback, Easton Wright, who has about 2,600 passing yards on the season, step out on the field with a slot back and a tight end. That yeah, looks like a quick that was a gift to, to uh, 12. Ho hoops. Yeah, that's right. I, I, was yeah. Trying, I was trying to see his number, and uh, I yeah. wasn't quite getting it there, but that, that is that, Travis Hoops. That Phoenix, that Phoenix green is uh, a little tough to spot from out here. Travis Hoops with 460 yards rushing on the year. Adds to it. With a couple more there, and it's going to bring up a – where are they going to push it to there? And it'll be third and two for the Phoenix. Yeah, running the ball on early downs, Mark, trying to set the tempo, get those pads popping up in the trenches. Great chance to get those linemen to warm up and open up that pass game. So White in the pistol, he's got hoops lined up behind him. Trips here to the near side on third and two, and White looking to pass. And it's two hoops, and who's got the first down? Rolling out of the pocket, able to find his running back quickly for the first down. And moving the sticks and making a march down the field against this caveman defense that has been pretty stout all season. A lot of players that know their job and do it well. Well, Agor and Clegg both in on the tackle as you hear them a lot. Some of the leading tacklers and, of course, Hunter Clegg, the Stanford commit. Coates in motion. And White gives to Hoops, and Hoops got as a hole. Good for about 10. We'll see where they mark that. Yeah, solid run there by Hoops. On the roster, at <laughs> not a lot of weight, but uh, still is able to break those arm tackles. You're going to have to wrap up to bring him down tonight. So it'll be a short second and one here. Again, similar formation. Trips now to the far side as a man comes in motion. Oh, that was Quentin in motion. And White to pass. Has a man complete. Number 16, that's Stuckey, Ben Stuckey. Yeah, Stuckey, the second leading wide receiver on this team. Seen his fair shares of catches and fair share of first downs as he makes another one. As Phoenix have prepared well to be able to find soft spots to attack in this caveman defense on their opening drive. First and 10 from the Phoenix 49 yard line. And it's a give to Hoops. Hoops will maybe get two on the play. Yeah, big stuff for that caveman front line as they're able to stop it for, looks like they're giving them two yards on that carry, but great effort there by the defense. So second and eight 
8.38 left to go here in the first quarter, and Farmington burning clock on their opening drive. Keeping the ball moving. As it's a give to Hoops, and Hoops gonna be tackled for a loss. That's Agor, Evan Agor on the tackle. Yeah, we see Clegg able to set that edge, push everything back inside to the rest of those cavemans flying downhill, causing that tackle for loss and setting up a, a big third down. Quick substitution for the Phoenix as they bring in another tight end. So. Both Coates brothers, and I'm guessing they're brothers, and I'm guessing they're actually sons of head coach Daniel Coates. Can you confirm that one for me, Nate? I Pass completed to Dante Coates, and he's got a first down. Down inside the 35. Well, they're going to mark it at the 35. Yeah, that would be some trivia I'm not <laughs> up to date with, Mark, as we've seen both Coates perform great for this team all season. And not only that, not only brothers, but I'm going to guess they're twin brothers as yeah, uh, they've got listed Dante Coates, 6'1", Jr., Dominique Coates, 6'2", Jr. <laughs> White to pass. And it's complete to Mitch Nils or, uh Sorry, that is, that's number 16, Stuckey, Ben Stuckey. A nice little spin there. Yeah, able to get something out of that as he runs his bubble screen right into his only blocker on that side of the field. Able to bounce off, regather, take it for six, and a second and four for the Phoenix. So in the opening drive, leading receiver Mitch Nilsson still yet to see a pass thrown his way as White continues to spread it out. It'll be second and four here. From the caveman, 29 yard line, that's Coates in motion. And White will give to Hoops. Hoops picks up about three on that play. Yeah, Phoenix obviously taking advantage, knowing that the defense is gonna key in on Nielsen, be able to spread that around and move the ball down the field. Clock down to 6.15 here in the first quarter. And Farmington continuing to drive. Ball control. Yeah, it's something we've seen out of the American Fork team this year as well is just time of possession is always a good thing for them is that they've been winning close games all season. Again to Travis Hoops, and Hoops breaks a tackle. And they're going to give him the first down here. Yeah, great job there keeping that engine running, those feet pumping as he's able to pick up another Phoenix first down. Well, coming into this game, I, I wondered about Farmington as far as the high-powered offense they have. What kind, what American Forks defense was going to be able to do in stopping them? Yeah, a quick glance at the, at the roster of the Phoenix. You don't see anything on the size and weight section that jumps off the page, but they've all clicked very well to be able to move this ball and make it efficient. I just, I just know the talent of American Forks. Tough to beat. There's Nilsson in motion. And it's a give to Hoops up the middle, and he's got a nice little hole that gives him five more yards. Yeah, this key. <laughs> the first thing you think of with this K-Man defense is that front defensive line that so far has not been able to hold up as well against this Phoenix rush attack and then you were expecting. So this brings up second and five inside the red zone for the Phoenix. Coates in motion. And the pass complete to Stuckey. Yeah, great job there holding onto it in traffic as we get a third and short here for Phoenix. And Farmington has almost utilized the hole first quarter in this opening drive. White in the pistol. Travis Hoops lined up behind him and it's give to Hoops. And Hoops breaks through. Breaks another tackle. He's got a first down and he's going to be marked at the six yard line. Yeah, another big run there. They bring the guard pulling around, able to punch out that hole for Hoops as he 
gashes that caveman defense again for first and goal for the Phoenix, our first trip to the red zone. So with that first down, the time goes under four minutes left to go here in the first quarter. And Farmington in their opening drive, using a lot of clock, marching down the field from their own 20 to the caveman six. It's first and goal. Man in motion. As uh, Marcus Miles there running the Wildcat for the Phoenix. Yeah, and then we see Matt. why that why the change up at this point, Nate. Uh. I mean, you've been moving the ball so good, running the same thing, and all of a sudden now you try something a little bit different inside the red zone. Yeah, it looks like they saw the cavemen pinching in, trying to plug up that middle, and maybe a change of pace. It's always a game of checkers, trying to guess the opponent's next move, and hoping that the, these red zone packages will work for them. Well, this will bring up a second and goal now from the seven as a one-yard loss. Nilsson in motion. White looking to pass. White across the middle, and it's tipped. Incomplete intended for Dante Coates. Hunter Clegg left unblocked on that free shot at Nielsen. Is, or sorry, at White as he comes flying through there. That can't be designed. Who was the – did you see who blocked it? I thought it was number 23, Boston Anderson. If I had to – sorry. I'm, I'm stating Farmington there. I meant Tyson Eggett. That's who it was for American Fork. You got to look at the right roster there. So again, third and goal from the seven. And we got a whistle. It's a Farmington timeout. You know what? We're going to take one as well. American Fork High School football presented by Avenue Bakery right here on KSL Sports Rewind. 2.53 left to go here in the first quarter as the Phoenix have marched down the field. They, uh, they took it at their own 20 after a touchback, and they have marched clear down to their own. I think they started at their six, or sorry, they got to the six. They got a yard loss, and it is now third and goal from their own seven-yard line here after a deflected pass on second down. Yeah, great opportunity here for the Phoenix. If they've probably burnt out. I don't know if he can script the first drive for that many plays, but they did well in what they were calling so far. At the same time, American Fork defense, we've known to be tough all year long. Maybe they figured it out down here in the red, in the red zone. Yeah, they, and still they make an, the stop. <laughs> they still have an opportunity to bend and not break, so we'll see what happens here. White in the gun. Stuckey in motion. And White looking to pass, rolling. Releases, overthrown, intended for his receiver, Mitch Nilsson. Yeah, had him open there, just not able to get the touch on it for him to haul it in. Well, so they're just going to look to add three here. As that was a 16-play drive on that opening series. How Great many plays? Time there. 16. Drew Romney, Jr. for the Phoenix, comes in to kick this one. Just a short chip shot at 24-yard field goal. It's up. And it looks wide right. No good. American Fork makes the stop. Big stop there, yeah, bend it, bro. don't break, Mark. Tough, tough situation for Phoenix to get down that far. As we saw, this could be a close game tonight and every point's gonna count. Phoenix used up a lot of clock, but the big thing was is ball control. They held the ball, yes, they marched all the way. They used up a lot of clock, we're 244 left in the first, but American Fork eventually stopped them. Yeah, great there. Great drive using ball control. That's got to be exhausting for a defense, and we'll see if that comes back to, to haunt them at all. But now American Fork will take over on their own 20. Yeah, and Ameri so <laughs> American Fork offense also likes time of possession. Hand it off on early downs and throw for the first. Starting at quarterback, it's going to be Lincoln Jackson. You know, we've, and we've seen a lot of different quarterbacks here at American Fork get 
get playing time. In fact, the quarterback I would say that probably started most of the games was Champion Edwards. But it yeah. is Lincoln Jackson, and I don't know the story if, if Champ's injured or if Lincoln Jackson has just gotten that opportunity to start as Watts carries for five. Yeah, it seems like there's been a tough competition for Q, for QB1 on this team so this season, Mark, as we've seen great games by both players. And yeah, coaches think Lincoln has gives them the best shot to win tonight. Well, then they and, and not only that, then they've got a third string, Dylan Story, who's who looks good too. <laughs> as Jackson again gives to Watts, and Watts maybe going to get a foot on that one. Yeah, big pulling. Guards coming around, not able to open up a hole for the running back as they uh, just stop there for a quick third down for the cavemen. So to bring up third down and uh, we'll say a short five. Who's the guy to watch on defense for this Phoenix team? Yeah. As that pass is thrown across the middle, complete. I believe that was Jet. We'll see who it is, yes. There it is, yeah, it was uh, Jet Nelson. Great pickup for first down there for the K-Men, but yeah, number four, Luke Hansen, the linebacker, is leading the team in tackles. As expected, him flying around, breaking off the, the O-line to be able to make plays. And, and not just tackles, too, he leads the team in sacks. Yeah, big playmaker there. First and 10. And it's another give to Watts. Watts going to follow blockers and pick up all, at least five. It looked like it was close to six. We'll see yeah. where they mark this. Great job there being able to fall forward as he's getting taken down for extra yardage. And it will be second and four here for the Cavemen. 117 left to go in the first quarter after Phoenix. Took, did their best to use up a lot of clock. And this time it's a give to Segura. Segura pounds forward for another three yards. Yeah, again, Caveman able to get that pulling guard out to their side of the field and able to push the ball down for a third and inches. Well, and I, with American Fork, Segura's been that, that back that comes in and just gives them some excitement. Uh, he's such a powerful burst runner. He yeah. bursts through the hole. Yeah, we've seen him on the KSL top plays of the week a few times this season. A great, powerful, exciting runner. Well, and speaking of that, I haven't had a chance to see Farmington in person, and so I've been excited to, to see this game. His officials are going to take an official timeout. I think they, they gave it a first down when they shouldn't have been. Signaling for the sticks to move now back. There's, now they're signaling for them to move back to a first down. See, I, I thought he was short of a first. I thought he was short. Yeah, that's what it looked like at first as we see the Farmington head coaches coming out onto the field to get the clarification there from the refs. You always wonder how that banner is going on the on the field. Well, just to mention, I mean, the, you know, I think this is uh, Daniel Coates' third year as a head coach at Farmington. But what a, what a career he's had as Jackson looks to pass. Across the middle, and I'm not sure if he was short or if he just didn't quite get it to the next man deep. <laughs> yeah, not able to hit somebody there. Yeah, but it's fun to see all these new schools in Utah popping up and coming out with great programs. Well, Daniel Coates, of course, played his high school football at Northridge. Goes on, has a great college career, NFL career, and then comes back to his roots, right? As Jackson keeps it and diving forward for that extra yard, they're going to give him six on this one. Yeah, it's always fun to see, especially at the high school level, how many quarterbacks aren't, for, aren't scared to hold on to it and just put that shoulder down and fight for yards. At the high school level, that's when they're young enough to, to go, I'm good. I'm not going to get hurt. This one's a gift to Hurdley. Hurdley. Still on his feet. 
trying to fight forward. They're going to be a yard short, so it'll bring up a fourth down. Yeah, did everything he could to try to fight for that first down, but just did not able to get there. Hey, we got a timeout. I didn't see who took who took the timeout. We'll take one as well. American Fork football right here on KSL Sports Rewind. I'm Mark Winterton. Nate Carter joining me in this quarterfinal matchup. As this one was definitely a game I was anticipating. I, I mean, I was excited to see. As Farmington, high-powered offense coming in, take on this defensive American Fork. Yeah. And either I expected this one to be close as well, Mark, as either we're going to see a shootout or a bit of a rock fight just depending on how these offenses and defenses reacted to each other. Still scoreless after the first quarter, but still plenty of explosive plays yet to come. Yeah, right now I say rock fight. <laughs> Fair, yeah. I, oh, that was the end of the quarter. That's what that was. No timeout. It was the end of the quarter. <laughs> and so now, of course, they turn it around here. It is going to be fourth down from the Phoenix 49-yard line. American Fork looking to go for it. Lincoln Jackson in at quarterback. Lined up next to him is uh, Jacob Erdley. Yeah, slight breeze headed from south to north, leaving Lincoln thrown into the wind in this quarter. Well, I, I checked the temperature here at American Fork, about 38 degrees. Yeah, this is probably the warmest it's going to get all day. Well, I'm glad we're here at this time then. Yeah. Lincoln's fired up as we saw him dancing around a little bit, waiting for the refs to start this quarter. Phoenix with six men up on there, up on the line of scrimmage. Jackson with the pass, complete to number 38, Jacob Dean. Yeah, First down, great, Caveman. Great job there by the tight end, able to haul that in, able to find a <laughs> find a an angle on that man coverage for a caveman first down. Maybe this is just the easier end zone to get to. Well, there was a defender right in Jackson's face, so I don't know if there was anything easy about that. First down, it's a give to Erdley. Erdley's got some blockers. Breaks a tackle or two. And Great. they're going to give him about five on that play. And here comes a flag. So some talking. Yeah. Chi chipping. Yeah, it gets hot in the playoffs, Mark. I'll have to see what they end up calling on this one. Could be. Well, American Forks marching back like it's against them. Personal foul against, against American Fork. 15 yard penalty is gonna make this one. And is that a repeat of first down, right? Yeah. So it'll make it first and 20. Yeah, playing behind the sticks is not anyone's dream, but definitely be tough here for the cavemen. Hey, you're marching. And it's just something simple after the after the ball is dead. Now all of a sudden, you got extra yardage you got to get. 11-15 here in the first, second quarter. Jackson looks to pass. Intended for Jet Nelson, knocked away. Yeah, incomplete by Stuckey. 44, Cole Noble White, right, right there as the ball comes flying at him. Great coverage, not able to hold on to it. Oh, was that Noble White that got his hand on it? Yeah, <laughs> or his helmet, whatever. Uh, Whatever he was able to do to break up that pass. Well, Stuckey also was in on there. So that brings up third and now 20. Jackson will roll right. Complete. It's 
Andrus. And Andrus will pick up a few yards. They're going to give him eight on that one. Oh, mark it back a little bit. Gave him seven. Yeah, tough situation to be in here. Fourth and 14 with the punter out here. Short field. Well, I've never seen Kyle Lott punt. Okay. It's always been Roberts. We got three returners for the Phoenix. And it's Phoenix. blocked. Blocked by the Phoenix, and they d go to jump on it. Now the punter's got it again. And can you punt it? Can you kick it a second time? That's my question. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen it in the NFL recently. I don't know if at the state level if that's a legal legal move. You punt it, it gets blocked, you pick it up, you punt it again. Yeah, it would have been worth a try after giving up that field <laughs> position for the Why Phoenix. not? Why not? Well, he punted the first one. I just thought I'd get a second chance. Sideline warning against Phoenix, but Phoenix with great field position here at the Caveman 40. Yeah, sideline warning after they're fired up after a big play like that. Love to see the energy, but you got to keep it on inside the or outside the field. Well, so far in what we did think what might be a shootout has ended up in zeros here. 10.45 left to go in the second quarter. That's Coates in motion. White gives it to Hoops, and Hoops will roll forward for five yards. Yeah, able to run the counter there. Get the defense to overcommit, <laughs> cut back, and able to move the ball for five yards. Well, it almost looked like White went to hand it to Hoops. He wasn't there, and he had to go the other side, but yeah, they it, recovered just fine. It might have not been a design counter, but it worked out for him. Second and five here for the Phoenix. Whoa, American Fork on the blitz, and they just lay wide out. Yeah, Maximus Edwards able to come flying off that blind side. Nielsen and slow, or White slow to get up. He hit him right as he released. Incomplete pass, but he's down. We're going to go to a break. We'll be back in a bit. It all starts with a smile. To show you care, offer a sign of love, Welcome someone home. Even when we don't see each other, or share a room, even without words, smiles bring us together. Let's keep yours healthy. Stonehaven Dental. Schedule online at StonehavenDental.com. American Fort Football right here on KSL Sports Rewind as White is going to come out. Hopefully he's okay, and we'll hopefully see him back in. In at cornerback is Marcus Miles. As Miles will keep it. Breaking some tackles. I think he's close to a first. Yeah, it looks like they might be able to give him that. As he comes out of the... The handoff stumbling, able to regain his footing. He moves the sticks. He got the first down. And we see and White come right back to the huddle. White's back. You know, I think White got a, the breath knocked out of him. He's probably going to be bruised and probably going to feel more that tomorrow. He's, it's so cold. It's like natural icing the, you know, the inflammation. Yeah, sometimes the body just needs a little reboot on the sideline and see what he's <laughs> able to see if it affects him at all. Well, it won't affect him till tomorrow. Hoops up the middle, breaks free. He's across, toss the 10, five, reaches. And they're going to say he's out at the one. Travis Hoops on the big run. Yeah, referee spotted the foot go out of bounds as he dived for the pile on. Big first and goal here for Phoenix, who was already stopped once at, first, at, uh, at the goal line. 29 yard run there for Travis Hoops. And in the first drive, that guy looked great. Finding the holes, following his blockers. And he picks up 29 on that play. 9.20 left to go here in the second quarter. Zeros. Nobody scoring. Phoenix here on their second series. 
Noble White in motion there. And, and now White will give to Hoops and Hoops pushing forward. It does not look like he got in. That tough American Fork defensive line stopped him in his tracks. Yeah, real battle of the trenches here, Mark, as we get to see who's been slacking on leg day as both lines go pushing, trying to stop the opposing team. Man, I don't know about slacking on leg day. Well, somebody's <laughs> got to be stronger than somebody here. But is that slacking, Nate? I do my best, but it doesn't mean I could lift it as much as any of these guys. <laughs> As White in the gun, gives the hoops again, and again he's met by that defensive front. Loss of one on the play. Yeah, ooh, quick flag coming out there by the ref. Ooh, that could be huge. Is it against Farmington or American Fork? It looks like it's against American Fork. Uh, they're wanting to talk to coaches. So they're talking to both head coaches. Yeah, obviously we're not on the field, Mark. We can't tell what these <laughs> kids are saying to each other. Coach, Coach Beam and Coach Coates both out on the field. I've never seen refs call both coaches out to the middle of the field. I haven't seen anything like this either, but must be something that they want nipped in the butt before it escalates any further. Well, that little conference call has come to an end. 8.26 left to go here in the second quarter. Farmington, Coach Coates, has called his whole team over. Yeah, bringing everybody in for a quick huddle there. Whatever it was, Coach B, or Coach Coates. So the question now is, was a penalty called? I didn't, did you see a, our head official? We've yet to see <laughs> anything called. On sportsman against American Fork. So half the distance remains third down. So it gives them one yard. Yeah, it gives them a yard. <laughs> Room for a QB sneak or try to give Hoops again the opportunity to finish this drive off as he has had excellent runs here on this second drive for, for Farmington. <laughs> Officials are still meeting here. Both offense and defense are lined up, ready to go. Coach Coates is actually still out on the field. <clears throat> and now the Phoenix are huddling back up. Yeah, interesting intermission there. I, I those are the times when I, I would love to hear what the officials had to say to the coaches. Because a lot of times, I mean, this is a game of student athletes. We want to act in a professional manner. And the officials are there acting professionally as this one's a give to Hoops and he's in. There it is. Touchdown, Phoenix. Yeah, it looks like the refs came in quick there to break up those piles. Whatever is happening out there. The refs don't want it to escalate as we get the first six points up for Farmington Phoenix. They line up for a point after attempt. Looks like they might be lining up. Yeah, I it's a, this a swing gate, but I, I don't. I've never actually seen a team utilize it. Maybe in film, but it's. And it's maybe worked before, but Drew Romney here to kick the extra point, the hold, and it's blocked. <clears throat> yeah, big job there. Number nine, Hunter Clegg. D1 prospect flying through the line, able to get a big block there. 
Shave off a point for the Phoenix. Well, that's a big play as now it's only six on the board. All of a sudden, American Fork scores. They can go up by one. We're back after this quick break. Other universities didn't fit into my life. They said I'd have to quit my job to go to school. They said it would take me four years to graduate. They said I have to take tests when they tell me to. They said my degree would cost a fortune. But I didn't have to listen to them. Because I have a university that listens to me. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU. The University of U. American Fork football brought to you by Avenue Bakery. Right here on KSL Sports Rewind. Mark Winterton. Nate Carter joining us. As, uh, hey, so far, great. Great game, right? Great game of defense. Yeah. Both defense ready to go. You know, we're talking about this uh, Farmington team, how we haven't seen a whole lot of film on them. I just haven't had a chance to see them in person. Uh, but common opponents that these three team or these two teams have had, Roy, Weber, and Pleasant Grove. All of them, American Fork, had the bigger point difference. But those are the three, and all, both Farmington and American Fork winning all three of those games. Yeah, very similar outcomes for both teams. We see it, Pooch. Aiden Cage on the return. Ooh. Oh, he gets stood up there at the 32, and they'll whistle it dead. So it'll be first and 10 for the Cavemen from their own 32-yard line. Yeah, interesting. I was at the American Fork Pleasant Grove game. Pleasant Grove down the starting quarterback in that one. Not as close as who we were hoping it would be going into the game. But again, yeah, American Fork's been able to play well against everybody in front of them, find a way to win. They were bringing out wide receiver passes to pull out the game against West. Just a a very disciplined team when it mattered. So Jackson at the helm. Fakes to Watts, and it's give to Hole. Hole makes a move across the 40, and a flag just comes flying in from the back judge. Yeah, I missed what happened back there as we were watching Hole shift his way up to get some more extra yards. Well, he threw that, he threw that flag 30 yards. Looks like it's going to be a holding. We'll see if he put the flag. Boy, he threw the flag great. I wonder if it was put to the right spot. Yeah, he didn't go up to adjust it at all, so. He'll adjust it. Must be happy with where he <laughs> whipped it to. Yeah, I'm going to guess that. Because I don't think they were that far back when he uh, held. Yeah, he's there going to. He's not going to redrop it. Where are they going from? Okay. So it's going to be go back. So it was at the line of scrimmage was the hold. They're going to take this one back to the 22. So it'll be first and 20 now for American Fork. Yeah, another tough penalty for the cavemen. Jackson looks to pass. Pass thrown and caught Andrus making the reception. Yeah, Jackson doing a great job finding an open man and moving the ball, but that first and 20, it might not be enough to get there. That one's uh, that's good for five yards. We'll make it second and 15. Tight formation here. Jackson trying to get the defense to jump. 7.34 left to go here in the second quarter. As the caveman down by six against the Phoenix. The visiting Phoenix. Jackson looks to pass again, and it's thrown to Watts. And I don't know if that was underthrown or if it was tipped at the line. Yeah, it just looked like he was getting the ball out quick, <laughs> not able to get it there as Watts turned around with not enough time to adjust to it. Big third down here for the Cavemen. So it'll be third and 15 now.
Jackson in the gun. Watts lined up left side of him. And then uh, Jackson going to throw this one up. Oh, and almost coming down with it was Jacob Dean. Couldn't get underneath it. It's going to bring up fourth down, and the caveman will go ahead and punt this one away. Yeah, he was checking to make sure he wasn't going to come out of the sideline as he saw that ball coming over his shoulder. <laughs> Tough to pull in as we see the caveman punt team come out for a second time. Well, and now here comes Trey Roberts, which makes me wonder. Uh, actually, this is the first time I saw him in the last play, and that's the first time I've seen Trey Roberts out there. So Trey's going to have to dig that one off the ground. The punt uh, land at the 50. Fair catch. Yeah, fair catch called there by Run. Ah, there goes oh. another flag. Aiden Cage over there. Another flag. Flag's coming out also, like juggling at the circus. Maximus Edwards over there. And again, I we'll see who that one, who these both are going to be against. But two flags. Yeah, I love to see players come out fired up, but there's just no room for that. Well, they, there's a little bit of shoving going on. Yeah. Coach is of course going to talk to Cage on that one. Cage has been a great piece of this defense, this caveman defense all year long. Waiting to see. Okay, so offsetting penalties. And so it'll be first and 10 for the Phoenix from midfield. Yeah, another promising field possession for the Phoenix is they've gotten down the field on both drives so far. <laughs> I've already been able to burn seven minutes on a drive. We'll see what see what they have cooked up now. Well, sometimes these so far the penalties that have happened haven't been crucial. You know, you had the penalty down at the goal line. What did it do? It gave them a yard. That was it. Yeah. A couple of those penalties that uh blocking the backs for cavemen put it first and 20 is just not not where this offense likes to to fight from right you're talking the that the hold or whatever it was was yeah. it a hold well yeah the ones that led to both punts for the but cavemen the, but the personal foul yeah, the personal per, fouls you know holds. yeah you're right so Mark. far those haven't come into play necessarily to make it crucial that's yeah that's fair obviously mostly that that muffed or that blocked punt by the phoenix is essentially what was able to, to open up that, that field right. position for him. So 7-17 left to go here in the second quarter. I'm not quite sure what is taking them so long because there wasn't a there wasn't a first down or a timeout called. But they are no. sure taking a while. You know what? We're gonna go to a quick break. We'll be back. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low-rate option you prefer. And then sit back and enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have a low-rate line of credit. Ready for whatever life throws at you. To learn more or start your application, visit uccu.com or stop by any branch. American Fork football right here on Castle Sports Rewind. White in the pistol. That's Coates in motion. Dominique Coates. And a give to Hoops. And Hoops pushing forward. He'll get five on this one. Yeah, Hoops having a day right now. He's able to pick up another five-yard gain. Uh, they're only going to mark him with four-yard gain. So it'll be... Going to be second now, second and six for the Phoenix. Again, that first quarter, Phoenix were able to take off about eight minutes off the clock. They ran a lot of time off that clock on their opening drive, which resulted in no points. As White now will look to pass. And now he's going to tuck it. Tuck it and run. He's across the 40. He's got a first down for the Phoenix. 
Yeah, great job there by White, able to scan the field. He was he wanted to find something and couldn't, so he ran out, avoided the defenders. It's always frustrating, Mark, to to be a defender and have that quarterback just just prance out of bounds without being able to get to him. Did you see? He uh, stopped and picked up. He's got some of those uh, hand warmers. They fell out on the field. He picked them up, <laughs> put them back in his in his little sleeve. He'll be first and 10 from the Caveman 38-yard line. Caveman with a four-man front, and it's a give to Hoops. Hoops trying to follow his blockers, and it's Clegg that brings him down. Evan Igor, <laughs> Evan Agor also in on the tackle. Yeah, great job there by the Caveman defensive line did a little shift there before the play. It looks like able to disrupt the blocking enough to be able to stuff that run. I'll bring up second and eight here for the Phoenix. And we're down under six minutes left to play here in the first half. Again, it is a cold one here at American Fork. Across the state as most of the, most of the state saw snow other than the south. As White, a quick pass there, complete to Mitch Nielsen. He jumps over the defender, dodges another one. He's off to the races. He is drugged down by number 50. Yeah, the number one receiving option for this Phoenix team. Able to hurdle a defender, shake off a tackle. Big yardage there. Moving oh. the Phoenix to the 16-yard line. Dylan Scoy that drags Nielsen down. And Nelson just was unable to get his acceleration going. Yeah, it's always tough after you leave your feet to, to get up to top speed. <laughs> feet he he made ground. some amazing moves, though. The, broke a tackle, dodged a tackle, white to throw, and an incomplete pass intended for Stuky. Yeah, Stuky excited to get downfield before he was able to secure that catch. Got to be able to watch it come in before you start looking to pick up extra yardage. This is Phoenix's third time in the red zone today. A stout American Fork defense. You start to get run down at this point going, hey, they've already been in our red zone this many times. As the defense hurries him along, unable to make the pass incomplete. That'll bring up third down for the Phoenix. Yeah, this will be a big set of downs for the Cavemen as they have five minutes and 23 seconds on the board to try to stall out this Phoenix offense. Could be a big, big opportunity to, to set the tone for the rest of the game. So White in the pistol. Travis Hoops lined up behind him. White mishandles the snap, and now he's going to get pulled down back at the 30. Big takedown there. Is that number two? Oh. That was a. Was that Blake Jensen? It was Blake yeah. Jensen there with the big caveman sack. Yeah, great job there, able to fight through, get back there, hold on to White as he's able to take him down for a big fourth down. So Caveman going to go to a three-man front here, put a whole lot of defendive, uh, defenders back as this brings up fourth and about 20, 23. And Phoenix wants a timeout. Hey, we're going to take one as well. Salt Lake Running Company is inspiring our community to move with purpose, embrace adventure, and consciously connect to their bodies. Exercise is essential now more than ever. Take control of the chaos and make time for you. From the gym to the trail, SLRC can help you find the focus to define your finish line. Visit one of our five locations along the Wasatch Front or shop online at slrc.com. 
American Fork Football presented by Avenue Bakery. I'm Mark Winterton. Nate Carter joining me as the Phoenix facing a fourth and 23 from the Cavemen 30 yard line. White in the gun lined up next to him is Luke Hansen, I believe. Yeah, looks like they're still lining up with a tight end. As White rolls, and the pass is complete. Pass is complete to Coates. That's Dante Coates, who will get back to about the 17 yard line, and so it'll be first down for American Fork. Turnover on downs there for Phoenix. Yeah, interesting situation, tough situation to be in, Mark. Obviously, first and or fourth and 23, just a little bit out of that kicker's range. Not much you gain by putting that into the end zone. Interesting stat, though, now for this game. Farmington's gotten into the red zone three times here against American Fork and stopped twice. They only come away with six points here as now American Fork needs he still needing to get on the board. It's a give to Segura and Segura will pick up six yards on the play. Yeah, I love to see that burst of speed Segura picks up as he's flying through the line, propels him at the first defender he sees, and picks up five yards. So they put, uh, I guess Coates was able to get back to the 19 yard line. So that's where American Fork started their own 19 as Jackson again hands off. Going nowhere. There's going to be a loss of one on this, on the run. Yeah, third down here. Third and five. We usually see a quick pass happen here for the cavemen. As they look at the sideline to get the play. Well, you've got some pretty... Some dangerous receivers in Jet Nelson, Hole and Roberts. As this one is to Andrus, and Andrus has a first down. And we've seen that from him a couple of times already today. Yeah, able to make that quick, quick out route work for him. And Lincoln's looking for it, connects, and is able to move the sticks there as we see American Fork run on early downs and pass for the first down. So it'll be first and 10 from the Cavemen 31 yard line. We're down to 310 left to go here in the first half. Jackson to Hole. Hole trying to make a move, nothing going, tackled for a loss. Great job there by the Phoenix defense, able to re sniff that one out. Fly downhill, make a play in the backfield. Second and 13 for the for the caveman coming up. So it's Jackson and Erdley in the backfield for the caveman. And Erdley in motion. Pass intended for hole is uh, incomplete, and that brings up a third and 13 now for the caveman. Yeah, Lincoln feeling the pressure on that one as he tries to dump it off over the middle. Not able to posture up. Ball didn't come out exactly as you like it. Not, not able to haul in there by Jace Hall. Jackson looking to pass again. Here he'll get it out to Erdley. Erdley. Gets it up to the 35, going to be short though. And so that'll bring up fourth and six for the caveman. They'll go ahead and uh, bring on the punt team. Yeah, great job here by Phoenix. Being able to, to have a coverage, only giving up those short out routes. It'd be dangerous to be giving up anything deep to this well, caveman offense. Cavemen still have Trey Roberts back there to punt it away. If there's a guy that... Uh, can get you a first down on a fake punt. It's that guy. And, and there he goes. Trey Roberts not going to get there. The Phoenix coming up with the big play, and they are going to have possession inside Caveman. 
yeah, territory me. with 146 left to go here in the game in the first half. Yeah, great heads up play there by Farmington, able to key in on not the traditional punter for the game man. Beat him to the outside and take him down before the first down. So it'll be first and 10 for the Phoenix from the Cavemen 39 yard line. And this one, White, not even looking. And that one hits him right in the knees. Yeah, tough time for a low snap as we have three wide receivers on the left side and wide out on the right side. So that brings up second and 13 here for oh. the Phoenix. The empty backfield. Clock. Yeah, empty backfield. Five receivers. Con clock continuing to tick. White to pass. And it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, White. White on the roster only listed at 5'11". Tough to get over the middle, especially with some of these big dogs on the K-Man line. Well, we've seen it a couple of times where it's been knocked down there at the line of scrimmage. But, uh, but still, he's got... Two over 2,600 yards passing on the year. Oh yeah, <laughs> kid's a gunslinger. He's been able to find open wide receivers, but that middle of the field just gets tough for him sometimes. With 114 on the clock, White rolling right, and he'll tuck it and uh, pick up some yardage, getting out of bounds, stopping the clock at 108. Yeah, not how you saw this opportunity going for Phoenix Have we seen him I guess run the ball so well earlier, and we have a caveman down on That's, the field. Uh, Dylan Scoy. Dylan Scoy that's uh, down. Presented by Avenue Bakery as Scoy is able to walk off the field on his own. Trainers are going to have a look at him as this brings up fourth down. And the Phoenix are going to go for it or at least looking to go for it. White out there on the field. He does have Luke Hansen there lined up in the backfield with him. Now he's a little deeper where you might see a rugby style punt and there it is. Fair catch is called for as this one goes out of bounds at the one yard line. What a... Wow. What a bounce there. That is a Phoenix. coffin punter. Yeah, did not expect to see that from the quarterback tonight. The coffin corner. He's able to, to bury him there at the one yard line. One yard line, so American Fork with one minute on the clock here in the first half. No score from them. Caveman huddled up. They got 99 yards line. to go. 99 yards to go. Looks like they might have something drawn up. During the regular season, you probably just go to the probably go to the locker rooms, but this is the playoffs. This is you only get tonight. Lincoln Jackson leading his team out onto the field here. Under center. That's Watts in the backfield. And, and did he give it, go under center and just try and QB keeper? It was a QB keeper. Yeah. There was, there was such a mess there. I couldn't tell what happened. Yeah. <laughs> red on red. Tough to see up here from the booth as we see him again under center. Always worried when you see a pistol or a shotgun quarterback come up. They just don't practice the handoff as well as much. How many you got in the box? Counting six. Yeah, that would be... Yeah, there's six in the box there. Oh, we see the K-men looking up at the play clock. Jackson up the middle again, and he'll pick up another one or two, one and a half. 15 seconds left on the clock. Looks like it was just a... They're just gonna, they're just gonna take this one instead of chance it. They'll take this one to halftime, down six, nothing. What we thought might be a shootout has totally changed, turned to a defensive shutout. Yeah, fun to see how much talent on both sides of the ball and how much that's kind of changing the game plan for both teams. 
We've seen the Hoops being able to run the ball against a tough caveman defense, something that they're looking forward to adjust in the second half. Well, and Farmington's lone touchdown came when they blocked a punt, getting the ball deep in American Fork territory, yeah. and, and then and got the touchdown then. Yeah, great job by that defense, able to, to stop them in the red zone two out of three times. American Fork football presented here by Avenue Bakery. I'm Mark Winterton. Nate Carter joining us on right here on KSL Sports Rewind as we get ready for second half action here. It's American Fork hosting the Farmington Phoenix. American Fork will receive the ball to start this second half. Yeah, first time we're seeing the, or the second time actually seeing the Farmington kickoff team. What, uh, what kind of changes you expect to be made after that first half? Yeah, you definitely expect to see the cavemen try to find an answer for what Hoops has been doing for Farmington as he's just over and over again been able to run up the middle for positive yardage. But offensively, they haven't been able to do anything. I mean, you can see that on the scoreboard, but they really haven't been able to move it as they try and go for the uh, onside kick. It's out of bounds, and so... American yeah. Fork will benefit from that. Great heads up move by the cavemen, letting that go out of bounds. No need to risk returning that one as they'll get excellent field position. <laughs> but offensively, again, I mean, cavemen have really been unable to move the ball a whole lot. Yeah, we've seen a lot of attempts at kind of dominating that time of possession from the cavemen as they like to run the ball on early downs and then throw to pick up the first and a couple penalties have just kind of thrown them out of that rhythm and we'll see if they come back with an answer with Jackson at quarterback. I, I actually expected to see Champ Edwards there as Jackson gives to Watts. Watts goes off tackle there off to the right side picks up four it'll be second and four for the cavemen. Yeah I guess we haven't seen anything necessarily to, to pull Jackson out of the game. A couple of balls haven't been pinpoint accurate, but no big mistakes, no turnovers or forced anything like that to pull him out. So we'll see if he's able to respond in this half. Hole in motion. It's a little toss to him. He's got lineman out blocking for him. He'll pick up another four yards, five yards there. Jackson Eastman shedding off the wide receiver block, able to make that play. Coming up for a, a third and short for the cavemen. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna give him first down. Boy, they give that first down too easily, it seems, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> the chain gang's gotta get some cardio sometime. And it's to Roberts, and Roberts has blockers as he makes a man miss, a spin, and he's down to the 36-yard line. Yeah, cavemen saw something they like to come out in this second half. As this is the most life we've seen out of the offense so far. Well, they really have to get Roberts into this offense, and we didn't see him a whole lot in the first half. And and that that would be, be of course, one thing that they've got to get in the second half, and we see it right there, which ends up in big yardage. Give to Watts. Watts across the 30. We'll see where they mark him out of bounds. It's going to be close to the 30-yard line. Bring up second and four here for the cavemen as they continue to march. 10.42 left to go here in the third. And so far looking like their best series yet, Nate. Yeah, coming out with life. Jackson, a give to Watts, and they drop the handoff. They fall on the ball there. It's going to end up in a loss. <laughs> Felt they... a little bit like an announcer's jinx on that one, Mark. Maybe. <laughs> they retain possession. Yeah, able to keep even that as we see a third and nine. Watson Jackson in the backfield.
Cole Nelson and Andrus of the far receivers, and we got a flag. Dead ball foul here. Going to be a false start against the Cavemen, and now we're going back another five yards. Yeah, that's probably an ounce or jinx. <laughs> Stalled out just, right as we praised Just them. when I said this looks to be the best series yet. They mishandle a, a handoff and a false start. All of a sudden, we got third and 14 here for the Cavemen. Jackson to pass. And he is going to get hit in the backfield. Sacked for a loss. It'll be a fourth and 19 now, and they'll uh, they'll look to punt this one away. Yeah, Edwards waiting for just something to develop deep as they needed 14 yards to move the sticks. Not able to have enough time as, yeah, he's taken down. The pocket crumbled behind him. So Trey Robertson to punt this one away. Roberts punt. <laughs> Good distance as they'll fill this one at the 11-yard line, and he goes down right there at the 12. Yeah, that punt return team for Phoenix almost gets to the punter again. And so it will be Phoenix ball at the 13. And we will take a timeout. We'll be back. It'll be Farmington ball. It all starts with a smile. To show you care, offer a sign of love, welcome someone home. Even when we don't see each other, or share a room, even without words, smiles bring us together. Let's keep yours healthy. Stonehaven Dental. Schedule online at StonehavenDental.com. Other universities didn't fit into my life. They said I'd have to quit my job to go to school. They said it would take me four years to graduate. They said I have to take tests when they tell me to. They said my degree would cost a fortune. But I didn't have to listen to them because I have a university that listens to me. Tests on your time, courses on your time, graduate on your time. WGU, the University of You. American Fork Football presented by Avenue Bakery right here on KSL Sports Rewind. Mark Winterton, Nate Carter, bringing his live coverage. We got 9.14 left to go here in the third quarter as it is gonna be first and 10 for the Phoenix. It's a handoff, hoops. Gonna get two yards on that one. Yeah, bottled up quick there. <clears throat> See if the cavemen have been able to figure out what this Farmington offense is trying to do and be able to adjust to stop it. You know, they've got two rushers that, that really have most of the yards for this Phoenix team. Boston Reinhold, Travis Hoops. Hoops, the leading rusher with 460, but Boston right behind him at 363. But I've been impressed with Hoops tonight. White's pass complete to Stuckey. And that will result in a first down. Ben Stuckey, 479 yards on the season, seven touchdowns. He's their uh, second leading receiver, and we've seen more of him than we have of Mitch Nelson tonight. What's happened to Mitch? I think Caveman trying to take away what Phoenix does best, and that was going to, to Mitch most of the season. And now they're having to find an answer for the next weapon on the on the Farmington offense. At the same time, we've seen some tremendous runs from hoops. And as this was to Mitch, look at him get caught from behind. Big run there, but I think <laughs> Andrews was reception. trying to knock the ball out. Yeah, trying to trying to make a play, but great job just slipping up the middle. Well, he could have brought him down about the 30-yard line, but he fought with him for another 15 yards. Yeah, it's a, it's a good-sized kid. It's, it's tough to bring him down in the open field as he was able to, to fight all the way down a quick. Was that another announcer jinx? <laughs> quick. Talking about how we haven't seen much from Mitch. Just positive Boom. regression there. <laughs> So Phoenix again, this is the fourth time tonight in the, or this afternoon in the red zone and it's hoops with the big gain. 
Hoops finding the holes, and it's going to be a second and four for Phoenix. Mark this one down at the uh, Caveman 12-yard line. So again, White in the pistol. Hoops lined up behind him. Coats in motion. And now we got a false start. Yeah, it appears to be a false start here on the offense. So a false start against Phoenix. It'll be a five-yard penalty. It'll make it uh, second, and, second and nine now for the Phoenix. Six fifty-one left to go here in the third quarter. Farmington, the only one that's been able to get on the board. As their uh, fourth trip into the red zone here this afternoon. Hoops going to hit a wall. Yeah, it looked like number 24, Evan Agor, able to wrap him up behind the line. Agor, huge defender for this caveman defense. As it brings up third and nine now for the Phoenix. American Fork showing five-man front. And blitzers as White now rolls out. He's got a man complete. And slipping with Zach Quinton. He'll get about five yards on the play. Yeah, Slotback not able to stay on his feet after catching that one. Fourth down. <laughs> Offense staying on the field. Yeah, it's fourth down territory at this point, isn't it? I mean, they kicked a field goal from here and missed it. Yeah. <laughs> On their first drive, couldn't hit it. And so, hey, stay on the field and see what you can do instead. Fourth and four, 525 left to go here in the third. White takes the snap, rolling. Throws, and he's got the man, got his man, caught. Touchdown, Phoenix. Adam Stuckey able to haul that one in. Able to break through the caveman defense into the end zone. Another six points here. For At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing. We're back. <laughs> American Fork finds themselves down by two scores. Look like a, a fat finger. Press there as we are trying to update our <laughs> scoreboard. I was like, hey, wait, where are you going, Nate? We're getting ready to go for a two point conversion here. White. Yeah, miscommunication, and he'll slip. And so it is going to be 12 0 here as American Fork needs to get something. There comes a flag, a couple flags actually. We'll go to a break. We'll be back. We'll let you know what they were. American Fork Football presented by Avenue Bakery. Mark Winterton along with Nate Carter bringing you this uh, quarterfinals matchup right here on KSL Sports Rewind as the penalty uh, results in Farmington and I, just some uh, unsportsmanlike good old personal fouls. We've seen a few of them tonight or this afternoon as Phoenix now will kick from the caveman 45 yard line. Hey. At this point, is it an advantage? Is it an opportunity to go ahead and try for an onside kick? Or do you just get the, the touchback? I always like seeing the kicker go from the field goal from this range, but <laughs> a smart play may be, yeah, a quick pooch. Yeah, this one is out of the end zone. And so it'll be a touchback. Yeah, and quick glance around the 6A playoffs right now. At halftime, Corner Caney is up 21 to nothing against is, the West Panthers. Is that halftime? Uh, at least, sorry, it's at least into the second quarter. I don't have a a live clock going. As 21 to score. zero. You know, well, we called the West West Jordan last week, and I was curious to see. 
if West's offense could match up to Corner Canyon's defense. Yeah. And so far it looks like they cannot. Is ball given to Erdley, and Erdley going to get two on the play. And then we have uh, in the 5A playoffs, Box Elder up eight points to Lehigh seven. Could Tip be. view, 35 to seven over Wasatch. That's not a surprise. Stansbury on Olympus, 14 to seven. Second and eight. Jackson gives to Erdley. Erdley going to get three on the play. Yeah, it's fun how easy we are to be able to check in from scores all across the state. It's not that long ago, Mark, before you just had to wait for the next day to read the paper. <laughs> yeah, that, that ages us. I remember Saturday morning just going through the, all the scores. Scores and stats. Wanting to know how that other team in our region did. Yeah. 4-10 left to go here in the third. It's third and four. Jackson to pass. Intended for Watts. And it is incomplete pass. Brings up fourth down. Caveman will have to punt this one away. Yeah, great work there by Lewis. 88, Jake Arnett getting the hand up. Swat City. So Trey Roberts comes in to punt this one away. We saw three returners at one time in the first half on a punt for Farmington. Here they've only got two out there. Roberts kick. Fair catch called at the 45. And yeah, now a flag comes in. For, bobbling it and get hit, but. So the fair catch, and then he took a couple of steps, and that's why the hit. That would be my opinion. No call there. Yeah, I, I guess I agree with you there, Mark. He was definitely moving after the catch into a defender. Usually from a coaching aspect, just well, get away from it. You can see American Fork coach down here talking about the bobble. Yeah, and that's but, where it gets sticky. But if you're calling a fair catch, you make that fair catch and then you stay still. He 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 took steps after the catch. Yeah, just to secure the ball, really. Right, right. But in that sense, as a defender. Yeah, it looks like it's live. That's. I don't know. The flag comes in. We'll see what the uh, official conference results. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Interesting things we've seen from the uh, refing crew. This they've definitely been taking crew. their time on their calls. Yeah, looks like it's been in the best interest interest of the game. So they are going to call a personal foul against the uh, caveman, and they'll give Farmington the ball at the caveman 39 yard line. So great field position again for Phoenix. Yeah, outside of their opening drive, they haven't. Been pinned too far back in their own territory. As we look to see hoops rush to the line and accept the handoff. Uh, the Phoenix come out here in the pistol white with hoops lined up behind him. 3.54 left to go here in the third quarter. And our defensive line jumping. It's going to be an offsides. Another five yard penalty. That's going to move it down to the 34 yard line of yeah. the cavemen. <laughs> Great job there for Farmington, able to keep that caveman defensive line in check with a hard count. Ooh, again, uh, that was the big thing I talked about uh, earlier was the penalties, and the penalties hadn't severely hurt either team, even though there were some crucial penalties. They didn't seem to hurt them, especially like they got a personal foul or whatever it was. Down at the two-yard line, half the distance was a one-yard gain, I guess, a result. As this a gift to Hoops, and Hoops will be tackled for a loss, two-yard loss by this defense. Yeah, we can see how hungry this K-man front seven is to get in there and find the ball.
Anyways, as I was getting to, now yeah, all of a sudden, you, yeah, you get you get some penalties, and it moves them from inside Phoenix territory into care, into cavemen, deep into cavemen territory. Yeah, this this Phoenix offense hasn't needed any hand handouts. They've been very very productive and. On second and seven, White to throw, intended for Dante Coates. It's, uh, just thrown out, out of reach, incomplete, and that will bring up fourth down? Third and long for the Is it third and Phoenix. Long? Third down. So it's going to be third and seven now for the Phoenix. White with Clegg in his face, and he out. He's on. Look at going. the elusive White. He's down past the 20. Going to run out of bounds about the 15-yard line. As he got out of reach of Clegg. That, we haven't seen that too much this season. Clegg's usually gets to the wide, gets to the quarterback, wraps him up, takes him down. White elusive enough to, to shake him out, find an edge. He's at the... Once again, Farming, yard line. Farmington inside the red zone. 301 on the clock here in the third quarter. Farmington up by two scores. Yeah, Caveman again with their back against the goal line, trying to make a stop here. It's Coates in motion. And it's a gift to, it's a keeper. QB keeper and White jumping forward. We'll get two yards. Yeah, White ready to take over this game. As defense keying in on hoops, makes it easier for him to keep it and wrap around the right. Easton White comes into this game just a junior. So he's got another year. And in fact, a lot of these guys on this team uh, are underclassmen. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna run into those, those seniors like Luke Hansen. But many a player on this Phoenix, on this uh, Farmington team will be back next year as this pass to Coates. He runs into his old man, but still going to be complete good for about three yards. Yeah, bubble screen there as he crashes into the, the screener and the blocker. Comes up with a little bit of a limp. Hope that he's okay. That was uh, Dante Coates on the catch. And so it'll be third and five now. From about the 10 yard line. We'll call it the 10. Noble White in motion. And White, a give to Hoops. Hoops has blocking. He's got a first down. He stood up at the one yard line. They're gonna stop him at the two. So it'll be a first and goal from the Caveman two-yard line for Farmington. Yeah, great job there by the Caveman defensive back, able to step up there and hold up hoops at the two-yard line. You know, all year we've seen Farmington make these, have these big wins. And we wondered how legit they were going to be. We wanted to see a line a. Uh, uh, a face-off, I guess you would say, against a Region 2 team. Yeah. It looks and like tonight they are. Uh, last week, well, let's see. They did play Pleasant Grove. And then I'm trying to think, who'd they play last week? We Weber High School. Oh, they played Weber last week? Yep. Anyway, so Pleasant Grove is really the only Region 2 team that they've played. Now, all of a sudden, coming up against American Fork and... And they've shut out American Fork so far. Yeah, quick offsides there for the Cavemen, giving a great opportunity here for the Phoenix as they are first goal from the one. And it's a give to Hoops. Hoops, not going to get it. He'll come up short. It'll be second and goal. Yeah, again, tempting the counter, trying to get that defense to overcommit and allow Hoops to cut back and get a shot diving across the end zone, just not able to get there. 
So the, so I think there's like maybe a couple tenths of a second difference between the play clock and the third quarter clock, the game clock. So they will have to snap it, but then we're going to go into fourth quarter here as uh, it's given to Hoops and Hoops. Did he get in? He did. Touchdown, Farmington. Yeah, there's only so many times you're going to be able to stop that halfback dive from Hoops as he is just so powerful and able to get in for another six points. American Fork falling short. Can't do anything on offense. What, what do, you, do you expect some sort of change in this next series? Are they going to come out? Different quarterback? Yeah, you definitely have to have something respond. You haven't had much. It's been tough, kind of the dink and dunk, trying to get down the field. Time's not on your side anymore. You may figure out what's the best option to get the ball down the field, Mark. And Romney adds to the score with one. And so it's Farmington 19, American Fork 0. We're back after this quick break. American Fork football presented by Avenue Bakery. Mark Winterton, Nate Carter here, bringing you this uh, live coverage here on KSL Sports Rewind. As it's the Cavemen hosting the Phoenix from Farmington. Six seconds left to go here in the third quarter after Farmington scored another, yet another touchdown, leaving Cavemen down by three scores. This one, Aiden Cage will return this one up to about the 24-yard line. We'll see where they mark it. But at this yeah. point, Caveman got to respond. That's going to, so that will be the end of the third quarter. Fourth quarter. Are we going to see American Fork? Yeah. Spark I, to life? <laughs> yeah, I've had a tough time this game getting to the, the coach's head, trying to trying to see what they're, they're doing out there. It's the last quarter for a response. Game's not out of reach, but. Yeah. But yet it is with the way that they've been playing. Yeah. I mean, they haven't scored. Hey, we'll, we'll be back after this quick break. Salt Lake Running Company is inspiring our community to move with purpose, embrace adventure, and consciously connect to their bodies. Exercise is essential now more than ever. Take control of the chaos and make time for you. From the gym to the trail, SLRC can help you find the focus to define your finish line. Visit one of our five locations along the Wasatch Front or shop online at slrc.com. The start of the fourth quarter here at American Fork. American Fork down by three scores. Hey, it's American Fork football brought to you by, presented by Avenue Bakery, Mark Quitterton along with uh, Nate Carter. And it's Lincoln Jackson in the gun. Here as they will start this drive from their own 25 yard line. Jackson looking to pass. And interception! That's a pick! Does that do, does that do them in? It, high school football, nothing does you in, Mark, but big play there by Luke Hansen. Luke Hansen, 90 tackles, 10 and a half sacks on the season. There's another inter or there's an interception. I didn't see. Did he have any interceptions on the season already? I didn't catch it on the on the stats. I, I mean, I, I was looking at all the coverage. Hands like those, I wouldn't be. I would be surprised if that was his first one. He's been a beast all year long for this Phoenix defense, and he gets that one, returns it back to the 13, and Phoenix. Once again, inside the caveman red zone. As White, again in the pistol. Travis Hoops lined up behind him. Here 10 seconds into the fourth quarter. And Hoops trying to find a lane there. He'll pick up a couple. It's deja vu, Mark, as we see again. Phoenix in the, the Phoenix playing from the red zone. And the cavemen trying to keep him out of the end zone. So at this point, you're just killing clock. As that is Coates in motion.
Coates once again in motion. And now we got a timeout by Farmington. We'll take one as well. Yeah, we come out of that timeout. Farmington with great field position after that interception return by Luke Hansen. Farmington looking to extend their lead over this American Fork team that uh, looked dominant all year long. Farmington's been too much for them. Hoops going to dive forward and pick up about four yards on that play. Yeah, just a play again and again, something that Cayman's defensive line has not been able to, to hold up. So at this point, Farmington just wanting to keep that clock running. White in the pistol, hoops lined up behind him. It's third and five. Pass to Stuckey, Stuckey, spin move. And I think he will just get back to the line of scrimmage there. No gain on the play. It'll bring up fourth and five. Yeah, able to avoid one defender there. Then wrapped up quickly at the line of scrimmage. And are we uh, going to go for it here? Farmington will go for it. Field goal would be about a 25 yarder. So they're gonna go ahead and under 10 minutes left to play in the game. And now Farmington's gonna take a timeout. American Fork Football presented by Avenue Bakery right here on KSL Sports. Rewind, it's fourth and Four. Fourth and four here. Play clock down to four. White. It's a quick pitch to their receiver. He's not going to get close to the first down. There's a flag in the backfield. The, uh, the run was to number 84, Dayton Runyon. Runyon, the six INTs, six interceptions on the year for the defense, but uh, they run it to him here. Yeah, a couple of punt returns on the season as well. Or as a return man. So it's a hold that they decline, and American Fork will take over on a turnover on downs from their own five-yard line. So a lot of field to play with. Jackson back into the field, or back onto the field after that interception. Yeah, big opportunity for the junior. Dig deep and... Try to find a, a way to pull this ball game together. Jackson back to throw. He's got it downfield, and it's another interception. Interception number seven for Dayton Runyon. Yeah, after coming off the jet sweep, able to pull in the interception. Exact same field position. Back-to-back <laughs> -back interceptions for Jackson. Trying to make something work. Throws another interception. We've got a uh, caveman down. 9.31 to left go here in the fourth quarter. Hey, we're going to go to a quick break. We'll be back in a bit. At UCCU, we'll provide you with a low-rate line of credit that makes it easy to access the equity in your home with no fees or closing costs. Simply complete an application on your phone or computer and select the low-rate option you prefer. And then sit back and enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have a low-rate line of credit. Ready for whatever life throws at you. To learn more or start your application, visit uccu.com or stop by any branch. American Fork football presented by Avenue Bakery. After that interception, the, the Phoenix are back in the red zone. It was Runyon's seventh interception on the year. Give to Hoops. And nothing going. Hoops back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second and 10. Yeah, I could watch right there at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to hoops for hoops to go. His he, offensive lineman was just stuck there. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing production from the sophomore tonight. Is hoops just a sophomore? Oh. 
Wow. <laughs> this time, White all alone in the backfield. Five receivers. As he puts this one into his receiver's hand, that's uh, number 20 with the catch, Adam Stuckey. Yeah, Stuckey also having great production tonight. Almost kind of the security blanket roll. Check down, find Stuckey, and let him break off a handful of yards. Brings up third and three here in the red zone. Third and three from the Cavemen 10 yard line. About 8.10 left to go on the game clock as White will give to Hoops. Hoops cuts it back in, trying to go for the first down. He's close. I think he's uh, gonna come up short. That'll bring up fourth and about a foot. Fourth and short again for the Phoenix offense in the red zone. Situation they've been in a few times tonight. See if they're able to give it to Hoops to dive in for that yard. Well, they've got Lucas Peterson into the game now. So Hoops isn't even in there. Lucas Peterson in the backfield lined up behind White. So no Hoops. And now we got a flag. They're going to go false start against the Phoenix. Yeah. Opportunity Clock. for another freeze play there for the Phoenix to try to get the K men to jump off sides and then go their way. So it'll make it a fourth and six. Clock down to 7.23 and now running. American Fork unable to get anything going. Back-to-back -back interceptions by Lincoln Jackson. To this point, haven't resulted in a score, though. Again, it's a little jet sweep to Runyon, and Runyon gets out of bounds. He's going to be short, and so it'll be a turnover on downs again. So back-to-back -back interceptions result in back-to-back -back three and outs. And American Fork will try again. Well, do you see a change at quarterback at this time? At this point, uh, <laughs> definitely got to be thinking about it. Looks like Jackson's very quick to get out there in the huddle. Haven't seen any change in. Looks like Champ Edwards is again headed to the sideline. Who's had a lot of success on the season as well. So it's been kind of a quarterback carousel for this American Fork team. Lincoln Jackson, the lone man in the backfield, five receivers. First and 10 from their own eight yard line. Like three deep for Phoenix. Jackson looks to throw. Intended for Watts, it's incomplete. That'll stop the clock with 6.49 left to go here in the fourth quarter in the game. Yeah. Well, at this point, American Fork needs big plays. You've got to, ha you've got to score fast and then let your defense get the ball back and then score fast. Have not seen that. I mean, you can look at the scoreboard and see American Fork has failed to do any of that tonight. Jackson looking to throw and it almost picked off again. Hole brings this one in, but he gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Brings up a third and 10. Yeah, it looks like a bit of he hesitation for Edwards as he knows what's on the line trying to make the adjustments, the plays downfield, hesitates a little bit, hangs that ball up there, potential interception again, all able to take it in for a gain of one. Jackson again to throw. This time he'll tuck it and he's gonna run. Makes a nice spin move. He'll be short, but uh, that's gonna bring up a fourth and reasonable one where you know they're gonna go for it. Yeah. The season on the line, no time left, down by three scores. Makes that one manageable. Great work there. Threw in the Madden B button spin. Be able to get him there to fourth and one. And we're looking for the sideline. Empty backfield. And it's a Jackson keeper. Yeah, quarterback draw. And he pushes forward for a big gain. And so they're out to the 28 yard line. Moving the chains. 
Of course, clock uh, working against them here as it continues to run. Yeah, need opportunities to get the ball downfield. The wide receivers have them help you out by getting out of bounds. Jackson's throw to Jet Nelson. It's completed at the 40-yard line. They're going to put it at 41, and so it's another first down. Yeah, nice work there. Putting the wide receivers high low, the cornerback able to get that one up and move for another first down. Don't want to jinx him again, but the looks like they have something clicking right now, Mark. Well, at this point, I, th I think it's just a little too late, Nate. And Jackson sacked in the backfield. Yeah, big sack there by number seven, Jed Junkins. I have him as number two tackler on this defense, able to step up and make a play when they need it. Well, not only that, he's got nine and a half sacks. That, that gives him over 10 sacks on the season. Yeah, I love to see the effort there as Farmington's only lined up with three down linemen. Jackson's going to keep it. He gets away from a tackler. Now he's just having to hang on to the ball as he'll pick up big yardage out of bounds, which stops the clock at four. Nope, clock continues to run. I thought he, I thought he got out of bounds, but he did not. This marks it at the 44-yard line. American Fork quick to the line of scrimmage, and now rolling right is Jackson. Heaving it downfield to Hole. Did Hole make the catch? The man came, our uh, defender come up over the top, knocking that one away, incomplete. Yeah, both fighting for the ball there. Ref calls it clean next to the play. Did it look clean to you? Did it look like there was any penalty? It got there when the ball got there. That's where I would. I actually wondered if Hole might pull that one in. Yeah, definitely wrestling it to the ground. Still had a chance. Big fourth down. Jackson looking downfield. It's Jet Nelson who comes up with the catch. Is it inbounds? It is. He's got the first down, and it keeps the caveman drive alive. Yeah, great job there by Jet Nelson going up at the highest point to haul that one in. Another caveman first down. What a catch there by the junior. Jet Nelson. Sure hands. Into Phoenix territory. He heaves this one again to Jet. And this time, I think that one coming a little early, and we got two flags, pass interference. Yeah, getting there a little early before the ball, able to take the wide receiver off his feet. Always dangerous, but moving the ball down the field again for the caveman. We well, had a defender go high and a defender go low on him. I'm just glad he didn't get hurt, because that one looked a little dangerous. Yeah, bounces right back up. 4.04 left to go. Cavemen trying to end this season on a high note. Jackson, after throwing two back-to-back -back interceptions, is bringing this Cavemen team down inside the 30, and it's across the middle. Yeah, Phoenix adjusted. It's intended by Andrus. Yeah. Or, sorry, intended for Andrus. Yeah. Farmington adjusted to two high safeties, trying to slow down this drive here for the cavemen. Cavemen respond going right over the middle trying to attack the hold in the defense. So that brings up second and ten here. Jackson with Watts in the backfield and he'll look to pass. Heaving it downfield and again complete to Nelson. Nelson and Jackson they love that little out pattern near the sideline which of course stops the clock. Yeah Nelson just being a workhorse as Jackson, that's his first look, and just just ripping it to him again and again. And the cavemen inside the red zone for the second time today. Only the second time is this one. Intended for Andrus in and out of his hands. So close. Just not enough touch there to be able to connect the two. Bringing up a second 10 for the cavemen with Three minutes, 50 seconds. This this from the Phoenix 17-yard line. Cavemen have been held scoreless all game long. Trying to put something on the board. 
As there's a throw to hole, and it's going to be incomplete. Great defense. It was number 98 on the uh, on the play. I think a number 98. I don't have a 98 on my roster. Do you? I do not. I have an 88 Jake Arnett. Uh, maybe who I credited and maybe that's Arnett. SWAT, but maybe. I, it does look like a 98 coming on. It does look like a nine, doesn't it? Passed a whole little bubble screen, and he's in trouble. He will get drugged down behind the line of scrimmage for a tackle. A uh, one-yard loss. That'll bring up fourth and 11. Yeah, big fourth down here for the K-men. Great job by Phoenix, able to rally up to the bubble screen and the wide receiver screen and tackle for loss. Well, this is a tough fourth down because at this point, I mean, you're already, you got the clock working against you. We got a timeout. We got a Farmington timeout. We're going to take one as well. It all starts with a smile. To show you care, offer a sign of love, welcome someone home. Even when we don't see each other, or share a room, even without words, smiles bring us together. Let's keep yours healthy. Stonehaven Dental. Schedule online at StonehavenDental.com. So on fourth down, Noah Anderson is going to come in to attempt the 36-yard 36 36-yard 36 field goal. It is up. It looks good. No, it is. It is good. <laughs> so that I couldn't tell quite. Yeah, it's tough to see kicks in this on this field apparently. Refs also looked at each other and <laughs> put it up. That's three for Caveman. So the Cavemen do get on the board. 3.05 left to go. I'm I'm going to expect uh, an onside kick here, Nate. Yeah, hands team coming out for Farmington. See what See how the onside kick works as they count off 11 players to, to make this happen. Onside kicks have been fun to watch this year. Whether in the NFL or in college, there's been some fun different style onside kicks. I saw, I'm trying to remember, it was at an NFL game where it was a soccer style onside kick where he come behind, kick the ball back to the left or down the middle. Yeah, <laughs> it looked like it was you know he was going to kick it get creative with it to the right and instead yeah he comes around the back foot to kick that <clears throat> quick glance around the state corner canyon is up 35 on west and sky ridge has started against davis and they're up 13 to nothing already as we see the top programs in the state continue to dominate so the winner of this game going to go on and take on Corner Canyon more than likely. Yeah, it's the winner of the Corner Canyon West game. And then uh, winner of the Sky Ridge Davis game will go on and take Same on kick. this. Yeah, it looks like uh, Farmington going to come away with that one. And so they'll Take over inside caveman territory. First and ten for the Phoenix. 305 left to go here in this quarterfinals matchup. Yeah, trying to catch Phoenix. <laughs> trying to catch him uh off guard. Yeah, off guard. That's exactly I, what I was looking I think, for there. I think they knew exactly what was coming. They were definitely expected that they've got they had hands guys up there instead of Blockers. So the wedge. Hoops. Line up behind White. That's Stuckey in motion. And White will give to Hoops. Hoops finding his way as he'll carve up to the 40. Seven yard gain there for Hoops. Yeah, yet to find an answer for Hoops just continually diving right up the middle. <laughs> fun to see. Fun to see a team that is able to rely on a inside run game. Yeah, that sophomore, he's 
he's had a heck of a time. As we got a timeout, we're going to take one as well. It's American Fork Football presented by Avenue Bakery right here on KSL Sports Rewind. Second and three for the Phoenix inside of American Fork territory. As White looks to pass, it's a Stuckey, and Stuckey's got it. Down across the 30. Does he stay in bounds? He does. Yeah. Stays in bounds to keep the clock running. Great heads up move there for Stuckey to be able to stay in bounds, keep this clock running. Get them seconds closer to a victory over American Fork. And it's a huge victory, too. Big victory for Farmington. Really, Region 2 has kind of dominated 6A football in the state for quite a, quite a few years other than Bingham. And so Farmington coming in here, getting a big win against American Fork, putting themselves into the uh, semifinals. Ooh. So we see... Things slowing down a little bit here. As Phoenix, <laughs> as Farmington is just letting the clock tick down. You're watching KSL Sports Rewind here at American Fork hosting Farmington Phoenix. 2.16 left to go in this game. Phoenix, they came out on fire, ready to play. They put the hurt down here on uh, against the cavemen. And now we've got officials coming in. I don't know what they were waiting for. Mark Winterton, Nate Carter bringing in his live coverage. Yeah, we see the cavemen stacking up against the line of scrimmage as they are expecting another run to come their way. How about the running from this sophomore, Travis Hoops? Little trap there or counter. Not going to get it anywhere. Hunter Clegg and Evan Agor are both there to make the tackle. It's a quick another timeout here. Uh, that will be that will be their last timeout. All right. Yeah. So it brings up third and ten. No more timeouts left for either team at this point. We'll see a whole lot of clock running. White, the uh, all alone in the backfield. He releases. Almost picked off by Cage. Intended for Stuckey as the two collide. Yeah, great coverage there by Cage. Able to break that one up at least. Not able to come down with it. It's a little shook up too after that. But well, uh, <laughs> Yeah, helmet in the ribs is never... Never what you want when it's 37 degrees outside. It'll be fourth and 10. Be honest with you, Mark, I don't want a helmet in the ribs when it's 72 degrees no. outside. That's... Everything hurts when it's cold. <laughs> Fingers especially. White to pass. And it's Clegg running him down. Oh, quick slide. <laughs> the hooves of Clegg coming up behind him, <laughs> able to go down safely. Was that was that what was going through his head? <laughs> that's I, Clegg behind me. That's, I'm running for my life. Just a stallion coming free in the backfield. 159 left to go here in this game. American Fork down by two scores. Now, now again, I'm saying two scores. That's two scores with two-point conversions. <laughs> yeah, two minutes left. 16 points here to go. It'd really be pushing this offense to the limit to be able to make it happen. Well, they've got to find Roberts, and they have failed to do so. Roberts on the uh, far side, and that one intended for Andrus, and Andrus, did he get it? The defenders got it. Andrus has it. They're gonna. They're signaling interception. No. No timeouts. They're done. They signaled interception, which means that is game. Yeah, the ref must have seen. 
Seen him come down with it quick. Andrus did a heck of a job trying to get to that ball. I, I would have liked to have seen American Fork try to go to Roberts more tonight. They didn't utilize their most deadliest weapon. Yeah, weren't able to find them. I mean, Roberts has had huge games all year long for them. And tonight, really, I saw one pass and a, a fake punt. That was it. Yeah, and is that, it's tough, it's tough. We'll have to look back at the film to see if that was, the k well, forgetting about them or just the Phoenix doing a great job of shutting them down. Well, it's definitely Farmington focusing on him, knowing, hey, he's their plague maker. We take him out of the equation, and we've we've taken out half of half of it, right? Exactly. Farmington, victory formation. As we have a minute 30 left on the clock. Yeah, so they'll they'll have to down it all. Really, all three plays. So, 106 left to go. Clock's going to tick down to what, 30? 36 seconds? Yeah, it's going to be a close one. 40, 26 seconds? Is that. I guess 26 seconds. Yeah, you'll be right around 26 seconds. One last one here on third down, and that is going to wrap it up. Farmington comes in and gets the victory over American Fork. Did you see? Did you see this one? I didn't see it playing out like this. Great job by Phoenix. Obviously playing outside of Region Two. It's it's become believed that this is a different level of football in the state, and Farmington showing up to prove that. They can hang with anyone. And I, and I too, I thought this one would be a little bit of a shootout, something that was a little more close. Instead, Farmington comes in here. They really shut Farm, uh, American Fork out other than that field goal at the uh, in the fourth quarter. Farmington had a shutout most of the game. Yeah. Down well, to a, a prevent coverage field goal there at the end. Farmington did a great job keeping them off the board. And looks to face Corner Canyon next week. Well, that's going to end American Fork's season. Of course, American Fork football right here on KSL Sports Rewind. It's been brought to you by Avenue Bakery along with Heidemann & Associates and Western Governors University. Mark Winterton, Nate Carter, have a good night.